So my name is Jessica. I'm from the travel unit. We will go ahead and start with the travel services website. So on this uh, DSS source page, we have the travel services website right here on the left hand side. And this is where you're going to find a lot of uh, rules, regulations, forms, certain items that might pertain to travel. Calators can be found through two different ways. You can click here on Calators and it's going to take you to the Calators Global main webpage. And again, this is a state controllers program, so it's going to go to the state controllers office webpage. Or on the home page of DSS Source, you can go ahead and click on this little icon down here for Calators Global. And again, it's going to take you to the state controller's office. Um, so here, uh, there is instructions on how to get started. So new user registration, you will go ahead and click that link. If you have travel advance and expense reimbursement, or you want their instructions, you can go ahead and look at their PDFs that they have provided to you. So to get signed in, first, you, if you're a new employee, you need to call the travel unit uh, help desk. And we will go ahead and take down your first name, your middle initial, last name, your social security number, your employee ID number, your index number, and your email. We're going to gather all that information, and then we will go ahead and upload that into a database, and we send that over to State Controller's office. They are going to add you to Calators, and at that point, we will get confirmation, and then you're going to get an email from us saying that you've been added. Um, until that's done, you will not be able to access Calators. Um, I encourage you to do that if you have not yet done that. Once that is completed, you're going to click on Calators Global. You're going to, the Java will pop up once in a while, so you're going to just hit Open. Um, you can say Allow. And then if this pops up, you'll just hit run. Sometimes it'll ask if you want to install it. If it asks you that question, just hit later. So if you're a new user, you're going to click on this new user registration link. And then you're going to input your employee number. This first time is always going to be your social security number. So even though it says employee number, it's going to be social security number and last name. And then once you do that, you're going to hit OK. And then it's going to pop up your profile, and you're going to have to fill out your profile. So I'll show, I'm already a user, so I can't do it, but I'll, sh I'll log into mine and show you my profile. Okay, so the profile, once you hit the new user registration, it's going to um, pop up this screen here. And then you're going to have to input your email address. So your email address is where your password is going to be sent to. Or if you forget your password and you go to the request a new password. So you want to make sure that this information is correct. You'll put in your email. You'll hit next. You'll type in your phone number. You're going to put in your bargaining unit. So you will, whatever bargaining unit, you'll just drop down and select whatever one you're in. And then this here is grayed out. So this is just if you're on direct deposit. If you are, it's going to have a Y. If you're not, then it's going to have an N. If you are on direct deposit, all reimbursements are going to be automatically deposited into your bank account. If you're not on direct deposit, you're going to get a check from the state. Um, you're going to have your mailing address. So this will be, um, most of the time, it's your home address. If you have a PO box, you'll want to put the PO box address in. And then if it says, is this your residence address, you're going to say no. And then you're going to say, no to this question and then you're going to put in your residence address here um, the, the travel unit needs where needs your resident address to audit your mileage so make sure that if you are a p.o box that you do give us that information if you're not then you're just going to hit yes and then it's going to have the information here for you you're going to add an approver here so your first time it's going to say add approver it's mine says change default approver because i'm already i already have an approver in there so you're going to click Add Approver. You're going to type in the last name that you're looking for. And then you're going to select the person that you would like. So I want to have mine as Eric Lau. So I'm going to say OK. And then it's going to populate his name into the Approver field. And then obviously, if you want to change your Approver, then you're going to go ahead and click Select Change your Default Approver. I'm going to change mine back. And then you're going to put in your work address where you work. This is also how mileage is determined. Like I said earlier, you are a lot of times if you start from home, you're going to get reimbursed in excess of your normal commute. We will check where you live to where you work, and we will deduct that from your mileage if you haven't done so when claiming that. And we do use the 
addresses very frequently when auditing claims. And I also want to add if you move or change work locations or anything, you have to go back in here and update this. It doesn't update it automatically. Um, if you change the information in MyCDFS, it's not going to change it in Calators. So you will need to go back into your Calators profile and change it. This here is our coding information. So it's just the fiscal year that the expenses are being charged to, your index number and your PCA code, which are, it's how it's budgeted. So you're budgeted for a certain amount of travel. This is how we know that it's being charged for certain to the correct program. And this is asking if you're long, on long-term assignment. Most of the people are not, so you're just gonna select no. You're gonna hit next, and then you're gonna hit done. And then it's going to go ahead and email your password to at that point, if this is your first time. And then once it emails you your temporary password, you're gonna go ahead, log in, you're gonna type in your employee number. So it's gonna be CDSS and then a five digit number. And then it's going to be your temporary password. Once you hit OK, it's going to say, do you want to change your password? You're going to say yes. You're going to create a new password. And then once you create your new password, you're going to have to log in again with your new password. Once you've logged in, it's going to take you to the screen here. And this is Calators. So to get to your profile, if you need to change it, you can either click Profile here, or you can go to Edit Profile, your preference. So I'm going to show you how to do a travel advance for your travel. Travel advances need to be submitted um, at least 10 days prior to your trip, and they cannot be more than 30 days prior to your trip. So we're going to hit New. We're going to say Form Type is going to be Travel Advance Form. Claim Type is going to be In-State Travel. Um, if it's Out-of-State Travel, you'll choose Out-of-State. But we're going to choose In-State, and we're going to hit OK. The report name is on this sheet of paper here. It's going to be your index number, your travel period, and your trip destination. My index number is 6625. And then our uh, trip period is going to be January 31st through February 1st. We'll list it two days. Second, 2018. And then we're going to go to Los Angeles. We're going to hit OK. And then it's going to say, how would you like to receive your travel advance? You can either pick it up if you're here. Um, we're located on the fifth floor. Or you can have it mailed to you. So you can choose the option in your profile. So it would be mailed to your, your mailing address. Or you can say other and you can type in you know, whatever you want. If you want it to be mailed to your mail station, just type in your work with your mail station. So it would be 744 P Street, MS 9580, Sacramento. And then you need to indicate the day the check is needed. So we're leaving on the 31st. I just need it on the 30th, the day before. And then um, we're going to go to travel advance information. So that was under general. Now we're going to go to travel advance information. So you can either hit next or you can just click on the tab. Um, the travel advance, so you're going to hit down here, you're just going to say advance. We're going to have two days. So when you're figuring out your travel advance, we encourage you to just do the main things. So airfare and rental car are paid by the department, so you don't want to include those on your travel advance. We are currently not having the department pay for lodging. That's under the works. You're going to want to include your lodging. You can include your meals if you would like. You can include incidentals. You can include parking if you're going to have any. You're going to, you can, if you have, anticipate how much gas. But we really encourage you just to use the basics that you know. We would rather owe you guys money than you owe the department money. Because if you don't pay, then we're going to take it from your paycheck. And it's just um, a long process. So we would rather owe you $50 than you owe us $50. So I'm just going to, I'm staying for two nights in LA. It's $120 a night. I'm going to anticipate $15 in taxes per night. So that's $270. And then my meals, I'll just say another 50 bucks. So I'm going to do 320. So three, oops, 320 for my, for my amount. And then I'm going to say that my trip starts on the 31st and it ends on the 2nd. My destination is Los Angeles. 
and my trip purpose is travel training. If you can be specific, we would rather it not just say like meeting, if it can say like actually why you're going, because you're only allowed to have travel advance for travel train or for travel expenses. We can't give you a travel advance for conference fees. We can't give you a travel advance for like van pool or anything like that. It has to be for travel expenses. So we're going to go to, com oops. So it's saying that this form should be submitted at least 10 calendar days. So it's just saying that it's a review item because it wants to know why it's not submitted 10 calendar days prior to your trip. So I'm just going to say last minute trip. And then this is for my approver, and this is also for the person who approves the travel advances. So she can know that this is the justification as to why it's it's um, under 10 days. If you don't provide it, she's going to email you, and it's going to hold up your travel advance. If you do it more than 10 days prior to your trip, so for example, if I change this to February um, 5th through 7th, and I go to it, it's, it's not going to ask that question because it's more than 10 days. So if it's under 10 days, it's going to ask the question, and you just need to provide a justification. It's saying who this form is going to be routed to for approvals. It's going to go to my supervisor. If it's over $1,000, it needs to have a second approver. So you're going to go ahead and just add the approver here. And you type in the name, look up, and then you can go ahead and add that second approver. Um, I think that information is provided on this little cheat sheet under number six. So um, on this cheat sheet here, the travel notes or whatever it is, it's number six. So um, anything over two, two, $1,000 requires two approvers. Mine's not $1,000, so I'm not going to add that. And then I'm going to go ahead and just type in my password. And I'm going to hit submit. Um, you can print it for your records, but the travel unit doesn't need anything. So I'm just going to say no print, and I'm going to hit OK. And now it's showing that it's submitted. So you can check the status. Say it's getting close to your trip, and you're like, where's my travel advance? You can check the status, and you can see who it's with. So if it's still with your approver, then you'll need to talk to your approver to get them to, to approve it, and then it will get to us in our unit. If it says department technician, then go ahead and give us a call. There might be a justification that they're waiting on or something like that. That's how you check the status, is you just highlight it and then say status. If, say, your trip gets canceled or you need to make trip changes, the date or whatever, you can just go ahead and right-click on this and then say recall form. It's going to say, do you want to recall it? You say yes. And now you can go ahead and open it and make any changes that you need. If your trip gets canceled and you don't need it anymore, then you can just, after you recall it, you can just go ahead and right-click on it and say delete form. It's going to say, do you want to delete this? And you'll hit yes, and then it's going to remove it from your queue.